and in the service of worship and praising God. So today, once again, we say, let our light shine among the nations and know that God is with us. Let us pray. God, Most High, we thank you for all your good gifts in this life. And we thank you for the gift of the honeybee. And we thank you for Deborah, who was named after the bee, for her wisdom and her leadership. And we thank you that it is for us an outward symbol of the inward gift of grace, how you have the power to transform, to purify, to cleanse, to forgive, but also give us the resources that we may burn brightly and shine a light into the darkness as we are made in your image to share good news to the world. And we ask your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. So as Jennifer shared with the children this morning in Pre-Kirk in the We Kirk program, I'd like to read this passage from, for our scripture reading this morning, and it comes to us from the fourth chapter of Judges. Together, let us listen for God's word to us. The Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Ahud died. So the Lord sold them into the hand of King Jabin of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor, the commander of his army, was Sisera, who lived in Harasheth HaGoyim. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help, for he had 900 chariots of iron and had oppressed the Israelites cruelly for 20 years. At that time, Deborah, a prophetess, Wife of, wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Abinoam from Kadesh and Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go take the position at Mount Tabor, bringing 10,000 from the tribe of Naphtali and the tribe of Zebulun. I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the Wadi, Kishon, with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We share in this passage today and discern God's selection as we are all called again by name. And in this case, God calls this woman, Deborah, to serve his people and to deliver them. Let us pray. God Most High, we pray now that you would illumine our hearts. Let a fire burn within us, the fire of the Spirit dwelling within us, that our light may shine among the nations. Like Deborah, may we receive the gift of wisdom to judge rightly and to believe and trust in your power to overcome all obstacles, to remove all challenges, to walk with you to the salvation and deliverance that you have prepared. Reduce now your servant that the word should increase for us all. Amen. In what has clearly, as I go down the list of pastoral concerns today, um, last week was challenging for so many people in our community of faith. Things unexpected. I do remain concerned as a pastor sometimes that with all the COVID-19 distancing and uh, wearing of the mask and all, that sometimes maybe we're not or afraid of dealing with some of the concerns that are necessary for us. This is a stressful time. It is taking its toll on our bodies and souls. 
And, you know, we long for something of yesteryear, perhaps. You know, the, what friends of mine Jake, would call the before times, as if we lived in some apocalyptic age. It is a strange time, for sure. But I know uh, I've got a good friend who is watching reruns of Mayberry, Andy Griffith and the town of Mayberry, just going back to the black and white, to a gentler pace of life as a way of just finding some comfort, finding some reassurance. And one of the figures that figures very prominently, of course, is Aunt B. Aunt B was the woman in the household and in her community who was there to care for others and look after each, each other. And occasionally, um, she would be given the opportunity, even though Andy as sheriff was often seen as the wise one, but it was Aunt B who kind of held things together in the community, and they looked to her. Now, she was human like everybody else, but she possessed a certain wisdom. Now, her B, probably short for Beatrice, reminded me of this Deborah whose name, literally in Hebrew, was also B this woman of wisdom. And what Deborah gives to the people of Israel is a sense of stability. You can imagine for a moment her sitting under her palm tree, likely indicating an oasis where there was fresh flowing water, and uh, that they would come to her in the shade of the day, and they would seek her guidance. And it might have been about raising the family, or uh, dealing with a pregnancy or childbirth, or it might have to do with how to do, settle an argument between two brothers. That's what her job was to do, to judge rightly in Israel. But one of the greater issues that faced their entire community, not just for individuals, was that there was an outside oppressor, and that was disrupting the entire community. And so the word of the Lord came to Deborah, and she summoned the general. And, you know, this is a female leader, very unusual. We don't come across this much in the Bible. Summons the leader, the military commander, and says, I've got a job for you. We are going, by God's help, to be delivered of our enemies. And lo and behold, this general Barak comes and does as Deborah commands, they organize, and they overcome this oppressive army that has given them such grief. And Israel receives 40 years, that good biblical number, 40 years, a couple of generations of peace in the land, the land that God promised to them. So today, we think about that when God calls us together, calls forth wisdom to be exercised in the community and to do things, that other translation of that name Deborah is not only bee, but swarm of bees. I remember as a child uh, growing up in Wilmington, behind our house is, um, we, call it the, we call it the swamp, but it's actually just sort of a wetland bog right behind the house. And I remember walking going down the street one day, I might have been on my bicycle riding up and down, and I saw a large tree that was moving. Now, for Tolkien fans, I'm not talking about like an ant walking in the woods or a big walking tree or something out of the Wizard of Oz where the tree is moving. Thing. But it was as if the bark was alive. And as I got closer and looked and carefully approached it, I realized the entire tree and the cavity within was swarming with bees. They were making a new home. When a bee, when a bee, a hive of bees swarm, they're dividing, they're growing, they're, they're becoming something new. And therein they make, make this rich honey and they create the wax to protect it and to seal it, to save it up for the winter months when things are lean in a season of despair. Um, where, where there's not much available to them. And Deborah, like everyone who is wise, and she's faced with the challenges before Israel, summons the people like a swarm of bees to create a new reality. 
Nobody else has taken up the charge. But she has a plan and a purpose walking with God. And they create a new vision. And so moving from a life of oppression and where they feel they're being broken down and challenged day to day, they overcome the challenges. They see that season through and enter into an unprecedented time of peace in the land of Zebulun and Naphtali. Now you may say, somehow that rings a bell. Zebulun, of course, we have a community nearby. But Zebulun and Naphtali in the north is also when the prophets begin speaking of the Messiah that one will come forth. So this generation, these days of peace are important to the vision and identity of Israel for out of Galilee a Messiah will come forth. The stories are all there in good times and in bad, in times of want and in times of plenty. In times of plague and in times of peace and prosperity. God is working out a plan for us. So today we are called like a swarm of bees not to go stinging and fighting. That's somehow we think of a swarm of bees doing that. But a swarm of bees by definition is creating something new to create new vessels in which to store the good things of life for times when they're lean, but also to be prepared to use them, that we may shine a light into the world. For we can look to this story from the lands of Zebulun and Naphtali. We can look to the leadership and the trust and the faith of Deborah, the busy bee, to give us hope in the good news of Jesus Christ. As Paul writes in one of the earliest of Christian writings in 1 Thessalonians, For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. We are charged, therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. Amen. Together, we confess what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
from north and south, east and west, we are invited to come to the table of the Lord. This table is open to all who seek Christ's grace and mercy to be reconciled one to another, that we may lay our burdens aside and have the hand of God to lift us up, to redeem and to restore us. Regardless of who we have been, we are invited to be a new creation in Christ Jesus. This day, as we prepare for communion, for those who are at home with whatever elements you may have with you, and for those who are gathering in the sanctuary un under our current situation, we're using the uh, small individual cups. Uh, just a reminder, there are two levels to that. Uh, the bread in the top, uh, that's one um, um, piece of paper, and then the other is the full to uh, take care of and drink the juice. We are called into God's presence today, and I invite you to pray with me now. Let us lift up our hearts and give thanks to God. For blessed are you, O God, who with your word and Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. For in Christ Jesus the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Through Jesus' suffering and death, God, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed its power forever. You raised from the dead this Jesus, who now reigns with you in glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. At this table, pour out your Spirit upon us to make us a new people of a new covenant. This day, we pray for the world for the church, and for our community of faith. This morning we have shared many concerns for people who are hospitalized, for those who are healing and making recoveries, for those who are facing surgical procedures, for those who are entering their last chapter of life. May they receive joy in this moment, in this final homecoming. Holy God, in these days of uncertainty, we know and are certain of your promise to be faithful to us. Even in our grief, you count the number of our tears. In all things, you have made us a holy people. And in your Son's name, come to this table. And we remember on the night before meeting with death, Jesus took bread, he gave thanks to you, and he broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, and he gave thanks to you again, and gave it to the disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. That together, as your Holy Spirit is poured on us here, that in the breaking of bread and the drinking of this wine, we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed and restored and redeemed by Christ's blood until Christ comes in final victory. And together we pray, as your Son taught us, when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as the bread is broken, we gather before the outward symbol that embodies the inward grace that Christ bestows on us. As we break bread and lift the cup, let us taste and know the goodness of the Lord.
Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, nourished at this table today, we give thanks that we are called with all that you have given us to go out into the world to proclaim good news in word and deed that we might bear the image of Christ and shine his holy light to all we encounter. And our blessing we seek in his name. Amen. Each week, we come and we pray for the coming of God's kingdom. Though we do not know exactly what this will look like, today we offer our gifts and our talents to God for the work of the kingdom here and now. We pray, mighty and merciful God, we celebrate your goodness to us each and every day. What we offer to you now has come from you. Bless our gifts and bless our actions so that your goodness will touch our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, our friend and Savior. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I charge you now to go out into the world that though we are physically distanced from one another at this time, we go knowing God is near at hand. I charge you to bear the good news and trust to God's purpose for all of our lives and for you, for God knows you by name. May the Lord bless us and keep us May God be kind and gracious unto us, and may the Lord look upon us with favor now and forevermore. And as the children of God, we say together, Amen. <laughs> 